My name's Jim Cope. Um, I'm a senior producer for Ruffian Games. We're known for working on titles like Halo and Crackdown. You might have heard of them, at least one of them. The other one's not so good. Um, <laughs> are we, I, wanted to ask, I wanted to ask some questions about a, uh, about a subject that is not my area of expertise, really. I, I'm an engineer by background, and I'm here to talk about aesthetics, which is a difficult thing. But I work across disciplines every day. That's my role. Um, and this is um, a hugely ambitious and philosophical question um, that we can't possibly answer in the time. So it's highly unusual for a game developer to start within scope. Um, now, what I want to say first of all is a quick disclaimer. I'm just off the back of a very, very difficult project. And this, some of this talk might come across as a little bit jaded. Um, it's not jaded, uh, I'm just tired. Um, the, <laughs> the, the best way of describing the way I feel about this at the moment is, is this image. And I, I, I think the, the subject of this talk about aesthetics and references is really important. We'll, we'll, we'll get through this. Um, I like this image a lot. It conveys everything I feel about game development, everything I go through. Um, ultimately, games are, oh, I'm going to come across as the evil producer now. But a massive part of games is an industry, it's a business, and it is about shipping products. And it doesn't matter what we talk about in terms of ethics. At the end of the day, you've got to make a game. And finishing is a skill in itself, and it's really hard. Um, that's all I'm going to say about this. I want to talk about how we use this as reference material to convey ideas and emotions. Um, throughout, this, um, throughout this talk, um, I'm referencing a film. Some people may have already realized what it is. Um, I think film is really important. But I want to start off with um, what I'm going to call a straw man of the uh, history of the creative process. Um, all art and all aesthetics really are just transformations of ideas that we see in our world. We turn our world into, trans uh, into, into artworks through transformation of people and thoughts. And I think this has been evident throughout history, throughout all of our art, going from early cave paintings um, all the way up to some very fine pieces of work. Um, this has been a, a process that artists have gone through for, for hundreds of years and, and the Mona Lisa is four or five hundred years old, if you don't know. And I would argue that Leonardo da, Vin Leonardo da Vinci could actually say he completed realism. Um, realism is not really a thing that um, artists strive for. And I'll come on to the reasons why I believe that. Um, for me, where creativity gets interesting is where artists and people and game, de and game developers, it doesn't matter who we are, it's how we transform world culture and what we see and feel and hear and think into new transformative ideas. Um, and that generates new world culture and we self-reference and we go round in circles and we push ourselves forwards and we generate new exciting things. Now, there's a really good example of this. Francis Bacon, who's a great artist, um, he was obsessed with two images. One which was the painting of Pope Innocent X. Um, I've, got to get, I've got to look it up in his name because I always forget this. It's by uh, Diego Velazquez. And the other is um, an image from a 1925 film um, by Sergei Eisenstein called Battleship Potemkin. And he took these two images and produced over 50 works of art um, in his Screaming Pope series of paintings. And to me, the thing on the right, the new world view of what he saw is absolutely fantastic. It's totally abstract, yet recognizable and powerful and, and interesting. That's the thing that I'm really excited by. So the realism problem, as I see it, is that fundamentally art shouldn't have finite goals. Um, artists have been looking beyond realism for hundreds of years. And the exciting thing for me is that games are a perfect medium to look beyond the finite bounds. And style is really important. And realism has been overplayed to death in games. Really good example. Um, Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Both of these games are 16 years old. Link on the left is utterly timeless. It's so stylish. That game still looks fresh and exciting, and it pops today. Um, at the time of its release, it was absolutely savage by a bunch of idiots saying it wasn't realistic. They, they don't know anything, right? Just, just ignore them, right? Because <laughs> Link is probably one of the most stylish characters that we'll ever see in our, in, in our industry. Lara, bless her. I hate to tell you, Lara, but you're looking a bit older now. You're looking a bit dated. Now, I don't mean anything personal by that. I think this represents amazing style for the age of its technology. But my point here is that this 
desire for realism can age really badly and it creates problems, especially when we think about where we want to express ideas and emotion, and especially in kind of creating timeless works of art. And just to be fair and to bring it up to contemporary standards, um, Link on the left, they've ignored the idiots, yay. Um, and they've knuckled down on very stylish presentation and I think that that's absolutely fantastic. Lara, again, the realism view of the world um, is technically brilliant, but I don't want to get hung up on the, the technicality because I'm an engineer, I see beauty in this. Um, the problem is that I think that we create ourselves um, issues in terms of uncanny valley, at, at things that people are very aware of, but I don't want to go too far down that road in this talk. A brief moment to consider the influence of film, like um, Francis Bacon. There's a film that's influenced me throughout my life. Um, but my argument is that cinema has influenced games more than probably any other medium. Um, cinema has also influenced many people in many different ways. Um, the problem with film is that film is a high fidelity transformation, it always has been. Black and white to colour, they're still high fidelity, um, and you can use those mediums as, as different expressive forms. Um, but fundamentally, film, from its origins, has always been looking at a literal transformation of the world. Games are brilliant because they are interactive moving pictures. There's an opportunity in games to do things that we can do in cinema, explore ideas in cinema, but actually make them interactive experiences as well. The problem with games is that we've been learning how to do this. Fidelity isn't everything in games. Um, it's technically challenging, and the problem is that all we're doing by looking at the world around us and trying to recreate what we have is that we're just increasing our fidelity through eight 16-bit, 32-bit eras, and lo and behold, here we are, we've completed it, or at least Naughty Dog has. Um, the, the problem is that all we're ending up doing is we're just creating an imitation of what we already have. Now, I've got a personal problem with that, um, I've got a realistic world. It's awesome. I mean, we can do many things that we, we want to be able to do in the real world. And the, the issue here is that I know that games give people an opportunity to do things they can't do in the real world, but why do we obsess about trying to recreate that? Why don't we look more broad? Why don't we open our minds to a bigger future? So where do we go? Well, game developers, like everyone else, and even in this room so far today, we've been talking about the influence of our world culture around us and how we turn those into new experiences. The amazing, the amazing thing about games and what we do is that we build new worlds all of the time. Every single game that's ever been made is about building a new world. And it's about telling stories and having experiences and fun in that new world. We can go beyond the finite. That's the amazing thing about games. So I want to think about these three things. Um, in games, we can explore new creative concepts like no other medium. We can make, interact, and visualize whole new worlds. We can transform the way we see and think. Isn't that a great thing? Like David Bowman, amazing to see this reference image used earlier, um, I've always wanted to step through the Stargate and see what else is out there. And it's a great thing that I'm not alone. Um, I think there's more to games than just aping realism. I think we need to push ourselves, create new worlds, create new aesthetics. Um, some of these games are on display in the VNA here, but they're examples of what I believe are true art and pushing the boundaries of what we see in games. Um, no Man's Sky and Journey, top left and top right, I don't think I really need to talk about. Bottom left, Space Giraffe, go and play it. It's probably one of the most interactive pieces of artwork that's ever been created in video games. Um, bottom right, Proteus, probably one of the most mind-blowingly weird experiences of navigating an environment I've ever had, but oh my god, it was better than taking most drugs. Um, I want to come back to the idea of, are we heading backwards? Are we too obsessed with realism? And I can think we can see that we're not really. We, my straw man is a straw man, it's easily burnt. Realism really drives our technology forwards. But we can do, do so much more than that. Are we heading backwards? Mm, don't really want to answer that. But what I can say is that forwards is any colour you like. Thank you.